Hey fellow fishing fanatics, so you heard that the spawn is the best time to catch bass. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not quite true, but more importantly, I'm here to tell you when the spawn takes place and why that it's not true, it's the best time of the year to catch bass. So let's get started. My name is Wesley Littlefield with anglers.com and I've got to say springtime is my favorite time to fish hands down period because there is a chance of catching really big bass but it's also very important to actually understand why this is the case and until recently I really didn't understand that and I wasn't as good of an angler as I am now because I actually understand that so the first thing that I did was learn the process of the spawn, which is what I'm going to lay out in this video, as well as I'm going to tell you why I don't think the spawn is the best time of year to catch a big bass. So let's start with how the spawn process happens. We start with pre-spawn and this can be as early as January for especially like southern states like Florida and Texas and even into California. But typically it's like February, March-ish area for most of the country. And this is when water temperatures are like warming up to say the upper 40s, 50s, maybe even mid 50s. That's kind of your pre-spawn when fish are acting in pre-spawn mode. So what the heck is pre-spawn? It's just when fish are starting to move towards their spawning areas. That's how I'm gonna define pre-spawn. If you want another video on pre-spawn, let me know in the comments down below. The spawn actually happens at about 60 degrees you know plus or minus a few degrees depending on where the bass are and their mood for the day now a lot of anglers don't understand and this is the part that i didn't understand at first was that all bass don't spawn at the exact same time so you might have a thousand specific bass spawning in this location on day one but then three days later it might be a total different 500 bass spawning and the thousand have moved off to deeper. So it's important to remember that all the bass spawning at this time that you see or that you know are there aren't the only bass in the area. Now this hurt me because I would only fish the area that I thought that the bass would be spawning and I missed a lot of fish that were probably just 30, 40 yards in the other direction. So with that in mind, remember that there are more bass in the area than you're seeing. Next, we're gonna move on to post-spawn. Now, post-spawn is obviously after those bass have moved off and what they do. Once they've spawned, they've laid their eggs, done their business, then they move into post-spawn mode when they're gonna be feeding up more and typically the males are gonna be guarding the nest. Once they hatch, the males move off, feed up, and so you've got a bunch of overlapping things happen at once. So you've, like I mentioned, you've got fish in pre-spawn mode, spawning mode, and post-spawn mode all in the same area. So you can catch fish in different sections of this area, I should say. So bass are gonna move and spawn, make a bed in shallow water. Shallow is relative. It could be anywhere from two to four to 10 to 12 feet, depending on water clarity and your location and everything. Then they're gonna move out and gorge themselves. So finding this area that has good transition, good bedding area, good you know, post-spawn area, that's the honey hole to go and fish. So let's talk a little bit about how to find these areas or where these areas are. Generally, bass are going to bed in a sandy bottom, pea gravel, something that's got a relatively hard bottom. You know, if it's real silty mud, it'll actually suffocate their eggs and they won't spawn there. So if you're fishing a real silty area, it's probably not a spawn area. Now that said, you know, sometimes you'll find them laying eggs on a log or along a, a real riprap bank, big chunk rock bank, because they don't have any other options in this area. I generally look for a hard bottom area. I also like fairly quick transition. So I've got a nice flat area with hard bottom and then, you know, 20, 30 yards away, sometimes closer, sometimes farther, just generally speaking, I've got a quick transition into a, a deeper hole or a river channel, a creek channel, whatever it might be. That's generally where they're gonna be. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the water on the north end is actually gonna warm up warmer than on the southern end because typically the southern end 
is going to be shaded. So that could be the north end of the creek that you're fishing is going to be warmer than the southern end simply because the sunlight is hitting it more. So look for the sunny banks where the water is going to be warmer. It'll warm it up a little bit quicker and that will is where the spawn will happen a little bit earlier than you might think. All right, the important stuff. How the heck do we catch bass during the spawn? And the answer is during the spawn, you're just gonna have to annoy the fish to death. During the spawn, they're gonna be on their beds, doing their business. They're really actually not gonna wanna bite. And this is why I don't think it's the best time of year to fish for big bass because number one, they're gonna be very intent on laying eggs, on spawning, instead of focused on eating. So the spawn isn't the best time to catch fish, big fish especially, because they're not intent on eating. With that said, you can annoy them until they bite using a jig or a soft plastic worm. Typically the best setups are either like a drop shot, which you can just sit there, pull it into their bed and just jiggle it around until they bite. You never want to cast directly onto their bed. You want to cast over it and pull it back to their bed. Typically you want to match a bluegill, which is one of their number one enemies that eats their eggs and their fry. So bluegill patterns work really well. Crawdad patterns work really well as well. And then there's even the guys that like to throw bubble gum, pink worms. It's just something very crazy looking that the bass is like, what the heck is coming over here to, you know, steal and intrude on my property. And it's just something that will trigger a bite. So those are my three pattern recommendations. Lures are typically, like I said, gonna be a jig or a worm of some kind. Typically I like the drop shot, but there's other variations. The Texas rig works as well. So that's how you catch fish during the, the spawn. You're just gonna have to annoy them to death. Now, in order to find these fish, they're typically gonna be shallow and you're gonna need to see in the water to see their beds, see the fish, so you don't just come up on them and spook them. And to do that, you need a good pair of polarized sunglasses. Lucky for you, I've got a video down below me rating three of the best pair of sunglasses from some really expensive sunglasses to some reasonably priced ones. They work really well for seeing into the water because they're polarized. I recommend checking out that video. I'll see you there. And until then, I want you to always remember that education is important, but fishing is essential.